short remarks, uh, may I seize this opportunity once again uh, to go through the program for benefit of those who do not have the program schedules. And they are as follows. I think uh, arrival of the guests uh, you have seen on our program, the welcoming remarks, the principal, of the Inside Training Center will give the welcoming remarks. The guest speaker keynote address will be given by the project manager, the Gambia. The vote of thanks will be delivered by a graduating students. So these are the programs uh, we have in our schedules. Without much ado, I now seize this opportunity to welcome the principal of the school, Mr. Ismail Sisi, uh, to give his welcoming remarks. Mr. Sisi, you are welcome to the podium. Uh, inside Training Center, board chairperson, uh, to come and 
give your welcome remarks. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you are welcome to the podium. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La ilaha illallah wa la sharika Allah. La hula mulku la wala hamdu. Yuhyu yumin tu la kulli shayin qadirun. Wa la hula wa la quwata illa billahi al-aliyyul azim. Uh, the Minister of Interior, who is absent, the YAP project coordinator, the project manager, YAP, the Director General of Prisons, the Board of Directors Inside Training Center, the staff of Inside Training Center, the students of Inside Training Center, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's of great honor to me, as chairman, board of directors of Inside Training, to welcome everybody to this auspicious occasion of the graduation of 123 graduates today. It's a happy day for us because 123 students are graduating in various fields of studies. Sad day because we'll soon be parting with them. But that does not mean we should not link up. I would like to give you some piece of advice, the graduates, because you are graduating today and you are going into the real world. This is the beginning of a new journey. Your journey begins today, your graduation day. And I will advise you to follow the following principles and rules so that you can become successful in your careers. I call it key to success in life. We have triple A principle. Triple A, the first A refer to Allah. We know Allah created all of us. He has laws that we are supposed to follow. So we need to fear him and follow his laws. If you fear God, we normally do what is right. If you don't fear God, you normally do what is wrong. So I adore all of you and encourage all of you. Whatever you do, start with Allah's name. But start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And whatever you do, have fear at the back of your mind so that you can reap the re reward in this world and the next world to come. If you fear Allah, you will always do what is right. You will not cheat. You will not lie. So this is very good for your profession to be a good person. The second A is called agility and ability to learn and work. Yes, you graduated. But still, there is a lot of work to be done for you to become a professional. So your agility and your ability to learn and work will count a lot in making you what you want to become. It's not easy, though, but one has to keep trying. And you have to be a teacher all the time. But remember, you will continue to be a student all the time. Because what you learn here may not be sufficient for you. You have to learn outside of this place too. When you go out there, you learn a lot. You will gather experience. But how much you know and how much you do will depend on you. So don't get lazy. Don't get lazy. Work harder. Try to understand what you learn in the classroom and make sure when you are out there, you make best use of it. The third E is achievement. Now, as you get into your profession, you have to be assessing yourself continually. What have I achieved? What I have set myself for? How much of it have I achieved? Where are my failures? How do I go back on the drawing board and start all over again if necessary? 
But you must know where you are going. Because if you don't know where you are going, then you are not doing well. It's always good to check your self-actualization. This is what I want to achieve. I want to be an architect. How do you become a good architect? You must learn the rules and principles of architecture. It's not that you just come and start doing things. There are rules in this world if you want to be a professional. Every profession in this world has rules and principles. You must follow these rules and principles. You just cannot come and you say you want to brush those things aside and you want to bring in your own thinking. You can bring your own thinking and sometimes you are a free person. You can always improve yourself. Nobody is saying that you should not innovate. You should not come up with better ideas. But there are certain rules and regulations you have to follow. If you don't follow them, you'll never become a professional. So as you are in the field, you must gauge yourself. Have I become what I truly want? What are my problems? What more can I do? Who do I link up? Remember, you have to learn continuously. You are a student, and you will continue to be a student. And at the same time, you'll be a teacher, because you have to teach other people what you know. And you have to provide service to people, and you provide what you know. We move on to the next principle, triple D principle. Triple D one is discipline. No matter how good you are, no matter how your qualification, no matter how brilliant, how handsome, or how beautiful you may be, if you like discipline, you'll not succeed in life. Because nobody wants to work with someone who has no discipline. And without discipline, everything is turned upside down. You retard your own progress because you don't have discipline. You will not be fair to other people because you have no discipline. So discipline is paramount if you want to succeed, especially self-discipline. Triple D2, dedication. Dedication here to duty. It's not that I graduate, so you think all is shiny and lovely. No. You must dedicate yourself to your duty. If you are an architect, do you want to be the best architect in the Gambia, in West Africa, in the whole world? The dream goes on. The sky is the limit. But only dedication can push you forward. Lack of dedication retards you. So please, get ready to be serious and get ready to get on the walk. Triple D, number three, determination. If you have no determination, you have no hope. Lack of determination kills your spirit. Lack, you, lack of determination makes you lazy. So one should only be, always be determined, whether in the classroom or out in the field, in the office, and wherever you may be. Without determination, you will achieve very little. So get prepared to be even more determined. Because where you are going now is a real war. And you have to get ready for it. So these three principles are therefore engine of growth and development. If you fail them, you fail yourself. Triple H principle. H1, honesty. No matter how your qualification, no matter how good you are, no matter what your achievements are, you must try to be honest. With honesty, you can achieve a lot. This honesty, you may think you are smart, or you are not smart, you are shooting yourself in the foot. So it's always good to be honest so that you can associate with good people. It's good to be honest so that people can trust you. 
It's good to be honest so that people can rely on you. If you are honest, your market will work. If you are dishonest, your market will close down. Second H is humility. Be humble, be simple, be down to earth. We are all human beings. We all come from Adam and our. No, no matter how great you are, they are not better than others. In fact, they may be better than you. It's just your fallacy, your own thinking, that you are great. We are all equal. Let's understand that. Especially when it comes to our clients. Treat them equally, treat them well. Humble yourself to them. That's the way people will come to you. It's not being pompous, not feeling great, thinking that you are a, a good architect and you can do whatever you like. No. The world does not go like that. If you don't need people, people will not need you. If you are too proud and you think you are too strong and powerful and you can do whatever you like, you will drive away people from you and your market will not work for you. The last H is honor. To be honorable. Whatever you do, be sincere. Honor is very important. If you have honor, you don't kid people. If you have honor, you think of your, 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 your dignity, the ethics of your profession. So the Minister of Interior is just around, so we'll welcome him. Now, if you have honesty, humility, and honor, this produces seeds of respectability and confidence building. You see, if you are honest, humble, and honorable, anybody will like to deal with you. People will trust you. Your business will prosper. But if you think you are clever and you can keep people, you can manipulate people. Your business will go down one day. Because as time goes on, your dishonesty will be revealed. If you are not honorable, it will be revealed. So if definitely you want to make it in life, these key principles mentioned here must be observed by you. Now you are graduating and you said you are becoming a professional. So we look at professionalism in the Gambia today. It's very poor. So as you go out there in the real world, you should take professionalism for what it is. Don't joke with it. To start with, the time for your profession time you do your services, time you do meetings, and so on and so forth. Respect time. Let's not go on with this Gambia maybe time. It's not good for you. It wastes people's time. It reduces productivity. And it's bad for our economy. So if you really want to be a professional, you have to have high degree of respect for time. It's very important. We have to change this attitude of ours. If you really want to be productive, if you really want to make it, otherwise it will be very difficult for us to succeed collectively. Professionalism is all about rules and principles. It's not about how you think or how you feel. There are rules, like for example, the constitution of the land. It has to be followed by everyone. That is the supreme law of the land. If you are a Muslim, you have a Quran to deal with. There are rules and regulations to follow. If you are a Christian, you have a Bible. There are rules and principles to follow. 
If you are a professional in the field of architecture and other related fields, and you are a contractor or a consultant, you have contracts that you sign. These contracts are the rules and regulations for you. What's important is not to abuse it, not to bring in your own unnecessary terms and conditions that are non-existent. It's not what you like, it's about what you sign. What we discover now, especially in Gambia of today, there are very few professionals. You sign a contract, you pretend to have you sign nothing. Tomorrow you can do anything and get away with it. This is very serious. And it's making the construction industry very difficult to organize. Because if people behave like professional prostitutes, what happens is that people cannot organize themselves. You fail them, and they fail others. You fail the program. You fail the time. Everything becomes mumbo jumbo. That should not be the new Gambia. If we want to be professionals, we must follow rules and regulations, principles, and so on, that are laid down in your profession. And you must have good ethics so that we can build this country to the next height. But what is happening now, it, it leaves a lot to be desired. It's not good at all. So on that note, I once again appeal to you to be God-fearing, to make sure you have discipline, dedication, and determination as you live here today and also try to be honest, to be humble, and to be honorable. If you have these key principles in mind, you'll become a successful person. If you brush these things aside, your development will be extremely difficult. And remember, professionalism. Let's follow the rules, let's follow the contracts we sign. Let other, others fail us, but we shouldn't fail them. That's very, very important to your profession, to your company, and to the growth of society to make sure that you don't offend people, even if they offend you. Forget it and move on. But one should be loyal to whatever you sign. And now people sign things, they, dis they dis dis disregard them as if they sign nothing at all, absolutely nothing. They can do what they like. That's not professionalism. So I once again appeal to you to try to be professional, to respect time, and to try to follow these triple principles I have just told you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the Honorable Minister, thank you for coming. Uh, we are thankful to the police band who paraded the students to this place. Two, two, five, five. That's very important, folks. That we can do it in the country here. There are a lot of opportunities here in the Gambia that we can do. It's not just our field of sport. You can do anything. You can become a businessman, businesswoman. You can plan to other areas. You can do your own profession together with other things. The problem here, and because of this, talents are not as strong. Incomes are low. So, over the emphasis, you know, you know, much more when you are paid half of that amount for 3,000 dollars that you swallow in a day. So, for us to really drive away poverty. We must work for ourselves. But as, as, as I have said, all these principles mentioned here, you have to have them at your fingertips to ensure that we can make it in the Gambia here. We can. And if we are ready, we have the determination, we have the dedication, we have the discipline, we have the honesty, 
the humility and honor and allow me high up here. So I pray to God to help you succeed in your new journey to the near world. Thank you all. Mr. Jiba, God is the of this entry for his inspired speech, full of wisdom and advice. He the need for people to be God fearing. Once you are God fearing, it doesn't matter how you say it is Then you do position to abide by the rules and regulations of the Senate rule. That was the time of the Liba for you to present this official. Mr. Jones, I would like to announce the arrival of the Honorable Minister of the Interior, Mr. Barrow. Mr. Barrow has been here for quite a long time and has contributed to this week to overall the overall objective of this country, Mr. Attachment places. Employers were asked to submit feedback reports to Inside at the end of the industrial attachment. Employers were satisfied with the performance of the students during their internship. Here is an extract from one of the employers' feedback report for a newspaper for our Ture and Rohi camp. They are journalism students. A total of 38 stories by our Ture and 15 by Rohi Chan were published by foreign newspaper during the attachment period. The stories covered foreign affairs, <laughs> foreign affairs and issues relating to governance, children, disability, youth, gender, development, and human interest stories. The report ended their internships have enhanced their capacity and employability as journalists for any print media signed by Samuel Osesar, managing editor. And similar reports have been received from other employers, including the construction companies. We want to express our profound appreciation to all of the employers for giving our students the opportunity to have the real experience of their trade areas. Inside also have been accepting students on attachment at its construction site and other enterprises in order to create employment and attachment opportunities. We receive contracts from MRC Holland Foundation in building schools. At the moment, students in construction are building the new school block for the new Yundum Lower Basic School. Opposite our school premises here, you can see a school built tile and fence by our students. We We thank the MRC Holland Foundation for making this happen and creating employment for the youth. Our tailoring students made the chair covers. Have you seen the ones with the newest design? Under the guidance of a Dutch designer who came to inspire our students' practice. What they call upcycling. This is reusing materials instead of throwing them away. They get a second life. This is an effort and a way of expressing respect for the environment because so many resources and efforts are invested to make the materials. 
the snacks that we can enjoy later are made by our students in catering who did their attachment in our school cafeteria. All students who are on attachment at inside receive $4,800 in monthly, in which 50% of the amount will be given to the student as monthly transport allowance, and the other 50% will be saved for them at the school to support them with working tools or establish a joint venture when they graduate. Thank you, Yep Gambia, for having made it possible for the youth here to further educate themselves. Finishing this course is a big step forward on their career path, which will bring them not only personal growth, but also a sustainable income. Not automatically, you will have to sweat before you reach further. But you have overcome many challenges and during your studies and attachment, so you know now that you can face any challenges and that is very likely that you will overcome it sooner or later with more or less efforts and support of others. On this note, Insight Training Center would like to thank the project manager and the technical advisor of Youth Empowerment Projects and, the, and their teams. We want to say a very big thanks to you and your entire management. I cannot conclude without registering my appreciation to the government of the Gambia for providing us with the enabling environment under the leadership of His Excellency President Adam Abaro, the Minister of Interior, the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism and Culture, the Director General of the Gambia Prison Service, the Honorable National Assembly Member for Serekunda West, Honorable Adesise, Management and Staff of Insight Training Center, the Representative of the Director of Higher and Tertiary Education, Ministry of, Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, the Representative of NACA, the media, and all those present. We want to say a very big thanks to all of you. He, however, advised students to reduce your response time to the opportunities available to you all the time. I think you will take note of that. As saying goes, a word is enough for a wise. So the next we have on the agenda, uh, that is the just because you not address by head project manager, the Gambia. But before we go into that, I don't know where the police van can entertain us a little. Uh, from there, we can move on to the, the next. Because there are some caregivers here, they want to shake their head and defeat. So, look at
Thank you so much, Boris Ban, for that interview. So the next we have on the agenda is the guest speaker's keynote address, who is a uh, year project manager, the Gambia. So sir, you are welcome to the podium. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen at the high table, graduates here present, I'm very honored and pleased to be with you today. We are here to recognize you. We are here to applaud you. We are here to congratulate you. We are here to celebrate you. We are here to also encourage you in moving forward. You know all that the Youth Empowerment Project has been the first initiative that was signed by the government of the Gambia, the new government of the Gambia, in early 2017. And I'm, as a commitment of the government to let no youth behind, and I'm very pleased that this commitment from the government has not faded a single bit. To the contrary, the commitment has grown even stronger and I'm very pleased that we have the Honourable Minister here with us today, which is manifest to uh, this commitment. I also want to thank the European Union through uh, generous funding projects and programs like the Youth Empowerment Project are made possible. And of course, I want to thank our colleagues from the Inside Training Center. Mr. Sisse, you know, I'm very comfortable here at this podium. I'm very comfortable at the Inside Training Center because, as you know, the Youth Empowerment Project is implemented by the International Trade Center. It's another ITC. So in namesake, so standing at this podium, when you read here ITC, already, you know, I feel very much at home. And it shows that we are together and we are united in our quest to bring about skills and to empower young Gambians. Oftentimes, people ask us, so what does the Youth Empowerment Project do? How can we benefit from the Youth Empowerment Project? How can we partner with the Youth Empowerment Project? And to simplify, I raise my fist and try to summarize it in the four letters of FIST, F, I, S, and T. F, F stands for finance. We are providing support to young Gambians, entrepreneurs, and skills graduates to access money. Access money to start the, start the business, access money to grow the business, and become more competitive and create also more jobs for other young Gambians. The I stands for intelligence. Intelligence to find jobs, intelligence to find markets, information, and to succeed in your quest. The chairman of the board mentioned about ability and agility. Things are changing around us, so we constantly need to find the information. And we often say that information and intelligence is the currency of the 21st century. If you have that, then you will succeed. Fist. S stands for, S stands for, I've heard it, S for, skills, thank you, S stands for skills. This room you're all very much aware about how important skills are. Skills are there to empower you, skills are there to allow, to access you, jobs to grow in your respective jobs. And if you have a skill, you're able to find an opportunity. Last not least, we have the T. In FIST, T stands for technology. Under the Youth Empowerment Project, we're supporting new technologies. We're bringing new technologies, whether it's in production, whether it's in education, whether it's in skills development, to make, again, institutions, companies, but also ourselves, human beings, more productive in what we do. So FIST, this is what we do, and I'm very glad that um, today we are celebrating a very important part of our program, the skills development, and this is a major milestone 
for you, a, ma a, major, a major milestone for us as well, the graduation that we're experiencing today. But you know very well that we can only enable you, we can only support you. There's a lot that you can benefit from under the new support mechanisms that are being rolled out by the government and its partners, such as the Youth Empowerment Project and many other partners. But there's many things that we cannot do. And it's only you who can do these things. And some speakers before me have already alluded to these things. And I want to once more emphasize three points that are ever so important as we move forward in order to make it, in order to succeed, and in order to be uh, to accomplish our objectives. Number one is vision. Now you have a skill, but you also need to have a plan. If you have a skill but you don't have a plan, you're drifting around. You don't know where you're going. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how fast you are. If you don't know where you're going, you can run as fast as you want. You're not going to move forward. So you need to know where you're going. You need to have a vision. You need to have a plan. Some of you, most of you will start small. It doesn't mean that you can't dream big. But you have to start. You cannot succeed. You not, cannot accomplish or your objective if you don't start. Simple as that. It also means that you have to take risks. Sometimes you are afraid of taking risks. And we shouldn't be. Sometimes we fail. But we can be proud in our failures. It's often in the failures that we learn most. It's often there where we can pick up most important lessons. And so I encourage you all to take risks and be not afraid of failures. If you fail, it means that we have set objectives high. Sometimes maybe a bit too high, but we have set them high. If somebody comes to me and says, well, I've never failed in whatever I've done, I'm, suspic I'm suspicious, I'm deeply suspicious, because either the person is lying, or second, the person has never really pushed the envelope. The person has never actually tried hard to really move forward, push the envelope, and set the objectives high. So do not be afraid of, um, of failing. Take risks. Start small, but think big, dream big. The second point I want to emphasize is hard work and determination. Again, we have already heard about it. There are no shortcuts to your success. There are no shortcuts to your objectives. It does require hard work and determination. And in order to achieve your objectives, remember, you cannot climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pocket. So you need to just keep on grinding. You need to have to keep on going. My last point is on passion. We often say, follow your passion. Passion is the key to success. And we cannot overemphasize the importance of passion. Passion is what gets us out of bed in the morning. Passion is, make, is what makes us love what we do. So know what you're, what you're passionate about. Know what you are what you would like to pursue and follow your passion. The passion often comes from the heart. It doesn't come from the mind. So listen to your heart and follow your passion. And the passion to me is the key to success and the achievement. Now, I was wondering this morning when I get up and I was thinking about how should I phrase, how should I define even success, accomplishment? And I was remembering a movie that just I just watched the other day. It was a movie called The Bucket List. A movie with Morgan Freeman and with Jack Nicholson, two of my favorite actors. And these are two elderly gentlemen who are meeting at the hospital and they are diagnosed with a terminal illness and they only have a couple of weeks, you know, like maybe months to live in their lives. So they create a bucket list. They create a list of things they want to do in their lives before they pass away. And they follow that bucket list. They go from one destination to the other. And one of those destinations on their bucket list brings them to Egypt. They wanted to see the pyramids. And it's there where they sit down, they gaze down to the pyramids of Giza, and they have this conversation. And it's there where Morgan Freeman says, the old Egyptians, they, had, they believed when you pass and you move 
to the gods, you will be asked two questions by your gods. And it depends how you answer to these two questions, whether you will be allowed and entered into the afterlife. And these are two questions that are very important, and I think it really emphasizes to me a lot what success and achievement is all about. The first question is, did you have joy in your life? Did you have joy in your life? The second question is, did you bring joy to other people's lives? Did you bring joy to other people's lives? And it's these two questions that I would want us not to wait until um, the end of our lives to ask ourselves, but I want us to ask these questions every day. Have we found joy in our life? Have we brought joy to other people's lives? And follow your passion, and I'm sure the answer to both of these questions will be yes. Thank you very much. The board chairman, who is also the CEO of Yama Construction, he has just informed me that he will be ready to accept joint venture with any student who have a proposal, and he will provide the finance, and it will be 50-50 profit on sharing. I think that's a good announcement. Okay, the next on the agenda is the presentation of certificates uh, to the graduating students. So we call out the names and uh, somebody among the personalities in front of you will present this certificate to you. Uh, I'll now call on the Honorable Minister, Interior, and uh, the former president of the graduating students. Can you come forward? Mamjara Jiba Nurumba Manager Youth Empowerment, Deputy Permanent Secretary Ministry of Tourism, Director General Prison Department, CEO National Accreditation and Quality Assurance Authority, Director General of the Gambia Prison Service, Executive Directors, and all other protocols observed here. I am much honored and privileged to be chosen to give the word of thanks 
in this occasion that benefited most of us here. I am Tita Jete from the School of Journalism Inside Training Center. <laughs> Mr. Chairperson, it is often said that youths are the cream of the nation. Hence, a country without a youthful population is a country without a sense of direction. And a country without a sense of direction is certainly meant to do. Therefore, youths play, um, youth play a pivotal role in shaping the socioeconomic development of a country. The Youth Empowerment Project came at a time when it is mostly needed in the life of all the beneficiaries. And on behalf of all the beneficiaries, we thank YEP for providing us to such an educational opportunity as one could describe it as a very successful project that has shaped all the graduates to become a productive citizens who are ready to serve their nation by contributing meaningful to, meaningfully to the development of the nation. The Youth Empowerment Project mainly focuses on youth because most of us here are dropouts, but with this project we now believe that we are down but not out. As most of us have learned skills ranging from journalism, catering, tailoring, architectural draftsmanship, solar and electrical installation, and construction. Students in each of these areas have been trained and trained well with this graduation. I am proud to declare the Gambia has given birth to a new town that will lead into a better Gambia. As most of us, as most of us here are fully engaged in practicing the area of our studies happily. So it will be unjust on my part to leave this podium without thanking the organizers of this initiative. We thank them wholeheartedly and we pray to God to bless them so they can help us further our studies to the next level. Thank you all. May God bless you all. I am Thank you. Thank you, Kida, for that brilliant speech. I'm so as your good ambassador of Inside Train. So I think that's the end of the show. But we allow the rest of the students to remain. We allow people at the high table to leave.